Hello, I'd like to show you Lightning Trace now being used for optimizing a system. And I have a, a simple system here. It's just an IES file of a laser diode. It's close to an elliptical mirror. And uh, I have a detector rectangle that's looking at the distribution of power. If I ray trace this, I've set the source up to trace 10 million rays. So if I ray trace this, you'll see that the ray trace of 10 million rays takes something in the order of 14 to 15 seconds to complete, which is extremely fast. Um, however, for optimization purposes, it's kind of long, uh, and it generally has meant that in the past, people have traced far fewer rays for optimizing, and they've therefore got a more approximate result. So here's my result. I've traced 10 million rays. There is my distribution uh, given by ray tracing. And if I simply clear that detector out and lightning trace, you'll see I get the same distribution, but in like 0.05 of a second. So lightning trace really has some advantages once we start coming to optimizing an optical system, um, because it means that w the, the, the ray tracing part of it takes far less time uh, than it used to do and still gives me a good accurate result. So let's build a merit function for this system. And let me just say that I go to uh, merit function design non-sequential merit function. This is a new tool that we just added into ZMAX as of ZMAX 13. Uh, and I'm going to tell ZMAX to first of all clear the data in the detector. And then when it comes to doing the ray trace, I can either use conventional ray tracing or lightning trace. I'm going to use lightning trace at the same sampling that I used here. And in terms of the criterion that I want, first thing that I want is a small spot. And I'm going to say that I want a spot size of zero. As I have nothing in the merit function at the moment, I'm just going to check this box that says Overwrite. So this would actually delete anything that was in the merit function. Uh, it's going to start at line number one. If I just apply that, you can see here uh, merit function operands have been written. I shall come back to that. But in addition to spot radius, what I also want is for the X centroid to be equal to, say, 10 millimeters. I'll just apply it. Notice the overwrite has been turned off, starting at line 7. I'll just apply that, and that gives me some more uh, operands here. And then Y centroid equal to, and let me just call that 5 millimeters. Okay. And I'll just press OK at this point. I'll also just do View, Hide Unused Columns, just so we can see all this more easily. And so I'm targeting the spot size to be 0, the location of the spot in X to be 10, and the location of the spot in Y to be 5. And you'll see that currently it's something like 4.2 millimeter spot size, and they are close to 0. I set this up so that they weren't exactly on axis. If I now set variables, the things that ZMAX can change is the Z position and the X and Y tilts. So I'm letting ZMAX change the Z position of the detector and the X and Y tilts of the uh, uh, reflector in order to give me the best results on merit function. So I'll now call up the optimizer. I'm going to use orthogonal descent. I'm going to hit automatic and just let the optimizer run and you can see just how fast this is I mean this this reminds me of sequential optimization just how, how, how quickly it's going you'll see that we've optimized the tilts and the position of the uh, source one thing that I just need to change is its scaling and I'll just change that here as well I'm just going to use this showing a log scale just so that you can see more easily. 
it's showing me the data now on a, a, a log scale. You can see where the spot has moved to. And this is not a particularly impressive optimization as such. I just really want to show you what's happened because we've now reduced the spot size somewhat. We've positioned the spot exactly where we wanted it to be or, or close to exactly where we wanted it to be. And of course, this is not exact because lightning trace is an approximate method that works well when we're not forming an image of the spot of the source rather um, this gives me a good uh, indication of where the data is actually going to be if I now use ray tracing I can trace the rays and I will get a more accurate uh, assessment of the, the spot location and size and of course it'll be more accurate because I'm tracing 10 million rays and you'll see that the distribution hasn't changed particularly. It's the same kind of shape. Um, if I use rays in the uh, merit function, the NSLT, non-sequential lightning trace operand, has a control that will let me use rays instead of lightning trace. And this is just so you can do a quick assessment of image quality. And this just takes a moment to run. And you'll see now that the spot size, the um, X and Y centroid are all being computed using these uh, values, using the rays uh, rather. So generally speaking, optimization with lightning trace is really, really good at getting you into a ballpark where you can start using rays and preferably radiant source models to give you the most accurate assessment of the, the system performance. But if you try and use rays and radiant sources right at the start of your design, you find that everything just takes an awful lot longer uh, because you're accurately computing something to a degree of accuracy that you don't need in the time taken. Uh, Lightning Trace lets you estimate the same distributions in a fraction of the time and it therefore makes optimization way, way faster than it's ever been possible to do in the past.